history. But, but the reality is that not only history courses, but software also needs both men and women, right? Uh, we aren't identical. We see things a little bit differently. And only if you have a lot of women participating and a lot of men participating, can you get like really well-designed products. All right. So, uh, so anyway, you can see uh, I got some pictures with my daughters. Now these are old. These are circa, like I said, 2015. Um, Anya is now eight years old and Simi, if you can believe it, is a senior in high school. So that's a bench in our backyard. Anya's third birthday party was a Peppa Pig theme. I don't know if any of y'all are familiar with Peppa Pig, but, uh, but Anya was really into it back then. And you can even see the characters. Ivan, I don't know if you can see the shirt, but my per shirt actually says Daddy Pig on it. Uh, anyway, anyway. Um, so anyway, I started helping coach the UCF programming team in 2003. We have many coaches on the team. In the years from 2003 to 2011, um, if you trained with our team, that definitely correlated with professional success. Over half our team members got jobs with top companies. And even some of those who didn't could have, but chose to stay in Orlando. Um, and the reality was this, and I kid you not, from 2003 to 2011, over 100 males were on the team and only one female in those eight years or nine years or whatever was on the team. Pretty crazy, right? So we got some funding in 2008. We have a private donor. Uh, and he gives our team some money. And we use that money to build a programming team lab. Uh, it's HEC 202. And we also use that money to give students scholarships. So this way, basically what we do is uh, the students don't have to find a job. They can you know, practice for the team and make some money. And it's pretty competitive. So here's the difference between theory and practice. In theory, the tryouts are open to all students. The practice and lectures are open to all students. Funding is a great incentive for students to practice, right? The reality was that the percentage of women trying out was less than the percentage of, of CS students that were women and funding didn't alter that fact. And, and part that was kind of frustrating to me, especially as the father of two daughters, is that males disproportionately benefited from the training and the funding, right? So we had this great resource on campus and only one woman took advantage of it or was able to take advantage of it due to how things were set up in spite of the fact that things were quote unquote fair. Okay. So in 2012, I asked Dr. Aruji, who's the head coach of our team, if I could work with several women as part of a women's programming team. So he allowed to allocate me 35 hours per week worth of scholarship money. So about 10.4% of all the money. Uh, and I found seven women and, um, and actually five of them got the funding and two of them actually joined without any funding. And so we had seven women that first year. And uh, so what we did on now our programming team meets on Saturday, it does like a two hour lecture and a five hour mock contest. Most Saturdays, we take some Saturdays off, but most Saturdays, right? Um, so when I, in 2012, I didn't do the lecture during Saturday, I did the lecture during the week. And then I did the contest on Saturday, but if you couldn't make it, I let you make it up during the week. Um, and then we set it up online, okay? And during the week, actually, is when I gave my lecture instead of making it one like long eight hour day. So outcomes of our 2012 team, we took one all female team. And unfortunately, in Southeast region, they didn't solve a problem. But in Mercer, uh, we took two all female teams. They finished 15th and 16th out of 33 teams. So the women in 2012, uh, the coaches were like, hey, everyone needs to come to practice. The women didn't hang out in the lab. The progress seemed slow. And the women themselves didn't like the team women's programming team. They didn't like that label, but they liked going to Mercer. So in 2013, we changed it to a develop, develop, developmental team. We included both males and females. And uh, so basically we had a varsity team, which are top 15 or top 18. And then we just picked a developmental team. And our goal was to make sure that we at least put some women on the developmental team. 2013, we had seven women out of, I think, 12 or 13 developmental students. Okay. And so you can see some of our results here. And you can see that um, the Mercer contest is pretty awesome. We finished third, fourth, and fifth. None of the teams were all women, but a majority of the students who competed on these three teams were women. And um, I also encourage women to take our competitive programming class, which is COP 4516. So every now and then we got some people who are upset, but you know, like you can see kind of some of the complaints. Some people didn't like which team there were. Some people didn't feel like 
we had done things fairly. Uh, you'd be surprised when you're a teacher, people complain about almost everything. Okay. Uh, in 2014, um, it was a little frustrating for me. There were eight women that were really quite good. And only out of those eight, only two tried out. So it was frustrating on my part. But many of them thought they, many of them had busy class schedules. Many of them got other paid jobs. And finally, we had a woman who made the varsity team, which was pretty awesome. And we had four women join the developmental team. So we went down from seven to five, but uh, it was a big accomplishment because uh, we had a second female on the, on the varsity programming team, which I was super psyched for. And you can see that when added amongst everyone, uh, the percentage was 21%, and that was very close to uh, the percentage of women in CS. So Mercer, we did really good again. And Southeast Regional, we did all right. We had much better integration of the teams. Um, women were doing more of the homework, right? And the cool thing was even though the new women that started on the team started with a lot less background, they finished just as strong as the 2013 group. So they were able to make up a lot of ground, which was pretty awesome, okay? And there's a nice picture of our 2014 Southeast Regional team. And so the biggest positive that came out of this is that mo almost all the women who were in those inaugural groups these are some of the uh, job offers they got from all these companies, a lot of companies, which hopefully you guys have heard of, right? And we also uh, ha finally got a woman on the varsity team, which was pretty, pretty awesome. And then this is pretty cool too. So this is a chart uh, I was given to me by a company that I'm not allowed to name, but um, the black bars represent the number of men from UCF the company hired and the gold bars represent the number of women. And you can see before we started, we were at one, <laughs> and then after we started, we really ramped it up. And this particular recruiter who shared this data with me, she was telling me that she directly saw an improvement in the skills of the women from UCF, and that mo a lot of it came from the women who had trained uh, on the team, okay? So, um, so anyway, I'll skip over this. So anyway, since then, so that was, that was 2015. And we continued in a similar way for the next, let's say, up until about 2019, 2020, right? So, and I think to date, we've probably had, we had one female on the team from 2003 to 2011. From 2012 to 2020, we've had like 36, okay? So way more than one, right? In uh, almost about the same time period, right? About nine, eight, 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 nine, eight, nine years, about the same time period, right? Uh, and what's really cool is that um, with that, with access to that training, a greater number of women were able to get access to more job opportunities, right? So the, the women on our team were getting offers from all the different places that the men were getting offers from. And I definitely have heard from my competitive programming class, the COP4516, that even if you never make the team, if you take that class, the skills that you learn from competitive programming make you very competitive and make you better at the interviews that many of these companies give, right? So now here's the bad news. All right, so I did all the good news. Now the bad news is that when we selected the dev team, we did some sort of massaging, right? So we didn't pick like the, four, the, the, the 20th, 21st, 22nd, 23rd, 24th, 25th, right? We wanted to make sure that the number of women we chose was roughly equal to the percentage of women in the major. You guys see what I'm saying, right? So representative. Um, and, and so, but what we found out is that a student complained and then UCF lawyers looked at the way we did our team selection. And now we're not allowed to do our team selection that way anymore. We have to do it much more quote unquote by the book. You guys see what I'm saying? Like we can't, uh, so we were told like about three or four weeks ago that the way in which we select our developmental team, we can't use that method anymore, right? And what I'm afraid of is that we're gonna go back to the days where only one or two women are part of our programming team instead of like six or seven, right? And so I'm here to recruit, right? And the recruiting means that, you know, I want anyone who is interested. So programming contests in a nutshell, uh, what they are is you get short problems. The problems are extremely well specified. They're algorithmic in nature. And uh, you get the college contest is three people on a team and you get five hours to solve as many problems as possible. Um, for the tryouts, we do individual. One person, you get um, 
five hours on the final tryout and you get as, uh, you know, as much time as possible. And you have to read the input from standard input. Uh, and then, you know, your program has to solve the problem and output the result. So I can show you. Uh, so my goal here is this, is that this Saturday is our qualification tryout for the programming team. So if you go to, if you Google just UCF programming team, Okay. And then um, if you go from here and you go to local programming contest. So um, all the information here is for the local programming contest. And uh, let's see here, it says, okay. So the announcement for the contest is right here. And so there's a website that you have to register. Okay. Now you can still register. All right, so yes, they say you have to register by that date because we did a practice last weekend, but you can still register up until this Saturday. And the website is right there for the registration, okay? So the practice contest, um, the local contest qualifying round is September 4th, and it's gonna be two from 2 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. So it's gonna be three and a half hours and it's online. All right, so you'll notice it's online. So you can do this from home. And then roughly speaking, we will av advance the top, give or take 70. You have to solve at least one question. Uh, we'll advance them to the final round of the local contest. The final round of the local contest will be on site on a lab on campus. Okay. And then this contest will be five hours and not 3.5. And then this is the contest which we'll use to select mem team members for varsity and junior varsity. So I'm hoping that some of you would be interested and coming to the tryout virtually, uh, the qualifying tryout, which is right here. And in order to do that, you have to register. And then if you register, you'll get information to your UCF email on how to compete. All right. So that's there. Now, so, so I would love for as many people as possible, as many women as possible to make the team. That would be awesome. But even if you don't make the team, what I'd like to do is work with ACMW to give the same training exercises that I would give to anyone who's interested in making the team. If anyone is interested, say for example, in, in practicing on their own this year so they can make the team next year, I, I'm happy to like, I'm happy to meet with anybody who is interested in that and give them the resources. Now it ends up being a lot of work, right? To become a really good problem solver, it takes a lot of work. But one really cool thing, like I said, is that the work that you put in, it pays off, right? One thing that pays off is that you will definitely do way better with job interviews in the future, particularly in your junior or senior year. Another way in which it pays off is in my basic one semester developmental team training, we cover most of the important stuff in CS1 and CS2. So if you do it with me before you take CS1 and CS2, then those two classes will be easy, right? Because you will have already seen the material You'll already know how to code it. And, um, and it's really kind of cool, like knowing that having the confidence that, hey, oh, oh, Dijkstra's algorithm or, oh, priority queue, I can code all that on my own. It's really cool. Now it does take some work to get there. Um, but, but anyway, I hope that many of you sign up. And Annabelle, if, if you could gather names of people that would be interested and if they're not on the team, but like interested in getting like, you know, kind of like, structured practice from me so that they would be you know interested in trying out next year i'm more than happy to do that in fact if you go to my website and you go back here you'll notice that i have these things called learning modules and in my learning modules i actually have like a bunch of notes a bunch of sample code and actual practice problems to try and uh, one of the other things that i've done is i've also created um it's let's see where it is um, right here, there's a website called open.catus.com, which I use for my CS1 class. And another thing that I've created is a practice problem list from open.catus.com that is sorted by, if you take a look, by topic and my difficulty. So you can like, if you're, if you're learning about a topic, then you can actually use a spreadsheet to find practice problems that fit that topic and fit like, you know, you have to do a few problems before you get used to my difficulty ratings, but the, you know, the difficulty ratings are based on, you know, the, the problem, typical 
competitive programming problem sets and stuff. But anyway, um, that's my presentation. Does anyone have any questions? And I can pull it back to the UCF team site so you can see the information for the tryout. There's a question in the chat about if someone is like busy during the weekends, like they work or have other obligations, is there a way they can still participate in the contests and tryouts? So the tryout is going to have to is going to happen on Saturday. So you can't try out during the week. You have to try out Saturday during the qualification from two to five thirty, and then the real team tryout was going to be because um, and that's mainly for like cheating issues, right? We want to make sure that it's a fair contest. So. Uh, we run it on Saturdays. And then the other thing is that the practices are on Saturdays as well. How do you show up for practice sessions if I don't make the team? Um, so typically uh, we decide that. So after the tryout, the next Saturday, we post um, you know, when, when our practices are. The practices are open to everybody. They've always been open to everybody. So if you want to find out practices, then email Dr. Ali Aruji at, okay, and let me find his email. Uh, I have to type it in here. Okay. A L I A G H A dot. Okay. So what you're going to do is if you're interested in attending practices, you email Dr. Aruji and say, and tell him, I would like to be added to the email list for the programming team. Okay. Um, let's see here. What are the other questions? Do we need to know C, C++, Java, and Python? Corey, the answer to your question is you only need to know one language. Most of our team members uh, answer all their questions in one language, and any of those languages are fine. So we support C, we support C++, we support Java, and we support Python. I recommend either C++ or Java. So my recommendation is C++ or Java, because for harder questions, Python tends to be too slow, and C doesn't have built in as many built-in libraries as C++ or Java. OK. Rebecca asks, what classes would you say are most important for learning the concepts we would use during competitions? The answer to that would be CS1 and CS2 and either the Java API or C++ use of sets and other uh, built-in data structures. So most of the questions are algorithmic. And so CS1 and CS2 are the main courses in our curriculum that cover the types of things that are useful. But it's definitely useful to know how to use Java or C++'s built-in uh, data structures and algorithms like sorting, right? C++, C, and Java have built-in sorting. Um, C++ and Java have a bunch of built-in data structures. In CS1, you have to write them on your own. But in contests, you use the ones that someone else has already written for you. Um, let me see if I missed any questions. How do we get structured practices again if we want to try out next year? Maria, just tell me directly. If you're interested in me helping you, then I will, I'm happy, more than happy to arrange meeting in my office and or sending you like structured homework. Uh, Atandra, anyone who makes the top 15, it doesn't matter whether they're a junior or senior, is definitely considered for the team. Um, for the developmental team, we focus on, we st even, even though I can't do what we used to do, we are still going to focus on freshmen and sophomores for the developmental team. And that we were told is okay. We're allowed to just kind of like uh, give a preference to freshmen. And the way that we're going to do it is that if you're a first year student, then the number of years of eligibility, we add that to the number of problems you solve. So. All right, other questions. So if you make the team, then the way that the payment works for the scholarship students is that everybody gets paid for 20 hours a, team, uh, 20 hours a week. Um, but we sometimes, it depends, each year we do it a little bit differently, but the rates that we pay are pretty, pretty good 
I can I can tell you that it's way better than being a TA. <laughs> All right, other, any other questions? Well, I hope this was an okay use of your time. I hope I didn't take too much time. And I hope that we get at least a couple people who, uh, who are interested in trying out and a couple people who are at least interested in coming to the practices. Uh, I believe that after we do the, tri the final tryout in person, that our first practice on September 18th, hopefully will be in person. Uh, we've been practicing virtually for the last year and a half. And I think it's really hard for people to like, I don't know, make friends and stuff like that virtually. So I'm really looking forward to our practices being in person and actually physically meeting people. Actually like most of the freshmen from last year that were first year team members, I've never physically met. <laughs> so I'm really looking forward to that. Great. All right, Annabelle, thank you so much for letting me uh, spend so much time sharing uh, information about the programming team. That's great. And if anyone else does have further questions, like he's shown us his website and his email, he is very friendly. Don't be afraid to email him. All right. Thanks, Annabelle. See ya. All right. All right. Back to our regularly scheduled meeting stuff. Uh, if you weren't here earlier, we do have a sign up form that's just asking basic questions about like year, major, demographic questions that sponsors I'd be interested in knowing. So, about the club. So, we are the Association of Computing Machinery. We are a student chapter of a national organization. Um, like professionals out in the workforce are members of this. You can get a student membership for $20 if you like, but for the club, only a couple officers have to be official members of the organization. But mission is just to provide education enrichment and voices for students in primarily interested in computing. So our main majors are computer science, IT, and computer engineering. But we're open to all of your interested in the computers. Of course, computers are in the world now. So everyone's going to be using them. And it never hurts to learn more about them. ACM Women, which is the full name is the Council on Women in Computing, but we just abbreviate it as ACMW. And our mission is to support, celebrate, and advocate for women in computer science. Last time I checked at UCF, about 17% of CS and IT students were women, and it was lower, I think around 8% for computer engineering. So we would like, change that through getting more women into the major through outreach and helping women stay in the major through like things like our mentorship program and just providing a social opportunity as well. And I got a couple questions about sign up for you've already filled out once you don't need to do it again. It's for our club anyway. And it really is just like we don't have dues, so like whether or not you're a member of this club is really up to you if you want to call yourself a member. The sign up form just helps us know like who we're serving. So this is our schedule for the upcoming semester. Uh, next Wednesday is something called Geek Night. I think we used to have these on campus, but I'm bringing them back and it's an avenue for geek, geek clubs to go and table. So there's like the Pokemon Knights are going to be there. I think the Dungeons and Dragons, the Art Club, some other things. So if you're looking for some other culture join, some more casual, less academic clubs, then it's just to go to that. It's going to be in the Pegasus Ballroom in the evening. Things coming up. Uh, the signups for our membership program close tomorrow, and the reception will be next Friday. Our next GBM is Monday, 19th on the 13th, covered preparing for an internship. And we have a, also holding a technical interview workshop with Fast Enterprises. These slides will get posted. So if you enter for the schedule, they'll also go and post stuff on NetConnect and 
hopefully our update soon. Uh, Ashley. Hi, is the audio working? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, awesome. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Ashley Hart. I am the president of ACE of um, SICAX, and we are the special interest group for algorithms and computer theory. So we are a subsidiary of ACM. We are a special interest group. And what we do is that we host bi-monthly workshops on various topics per pertaining to algorithms and computer theory. Um, our primary aim is to support our members who are as we prepare for research, research opportunities and careers in the industry. And um, we'll be having our first GBM on September 1st at 6 p.m. The GBM will be held virtually and you can find updates about what we're doing in the SIGAS category on the, on the Discord for this organization. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us there. And you can also email us at SIGAC at UCFACMW.org and follow us on Instagram at UCF SIGAC. September 1st is this Wednesday. September really snuck up on us. All right. So, seeing the officers, hi, I'm Anne Bell. I am a senior. I'm graduating in spring with my bachelor's in computer science. And after that, I have officially accepted an offer to work at CWC or PricewaterhouseCoopers as a data engineer in Denver. And PWC is one of the, like, the big four accounting firms. The others are like Deloitte. Ernst and Young and something else, because yes, big accounting firms and really any big firm, they all need computer science. People also don't feel limited to just applying to like Google, Microsoft, and other classic tech companies. So some of you returning customers that recognize me, I used to be the vice president of this club, and for that I was the outreach director. And Something I think really suits my personalities. If I can play as an Elven Mage in a video game, that is what I will play. Just never even consider anything else. Um, Amelia Krent make it tonight, but she is the vice president of ACMW and she is a digital media major studying web design. Um, she's also currently working as an RA, which is what's keeping her from us tonight. But if you live in one of her buildings, then say hi. Mm. Kron also told us he wouldn't be able to make it, but he is also the treasurer of Night Hacks. We have some crossover between our two clubs. You might see him in that Discord as well. Afiza. I always forget I'm muted. <laughs> but um, hi, I'm Nafisa. I'm a junior. I'm majoring in IT. And um, I wanted to be here this semester, but I'm in South Carolina now. I'm interning at BMW, but I honestly just got home from work, so I'm still wearing my uniform. <laughs> um, those are some of my interests outside of school. And um, even though I'm not here and unable to meet you guys, I'd really still love to connect. So all my social media is written down there. So please feel free to, feel free to reach out about anything you'd like. Yeah, did I see any of you here? Yeah, I'm here. Hi guys, uh, I'm Leah. I'm a junior computer science major and I'm currently gonna aim for a minor in intelligent robotic systems. Uh, some things I like to do outside of school are like art, reading, playing games, and I also stream on Twitch sometimes. Um, you feel free to like reach out to me on anything. Oh, I forgot to say I was the secretary, so like I did the email that you might have received uh, earlier. But woo, excited to work with you guys this, this semester. Yeah. On the subject of newsletter, I'll post the link to sign up for that because we do include like other opportunities in there that want to make sure don't get lost. Neither some of the Discord channels, resources, and opportunities don't want to get lost there and have it all nice and condensed in one place. So I'll post the sign up for that to our Discord later. Melanie. Hello. Oh. Hello. Sorry, I didn't know I was unmuted. But I'm Melanie. I'm a sophomore computer science major and mathematics minor. And I'm also a researcher at the STIR lab and the communications director of NIHACS. So some of my interests are there. I have like a lot of various interests. 
And I love like meeting new people and hence like why I'm the marketing director. I love like bringing the field of tech to more people. And you can feel free to reach out to me about in any of these platforms, including Spotify, which you can scan the Spotify code. And I'm always down to like, um, like talk about anything or like even if you just want to make a new friend. Yeah. There we go. Hi, I'm Mia. I am the outreach director. I'm technically a junior, um, but complicated. Um, I'm working in or majoring in computer science. Um, I'm interested in software development and cybersecurity. Um, and yeah, so like you could uh, see, I love um, anime and I play the bass. So um if you have any ideas not only as far as like outreach with the wider community but as well as like in within UCF or if you want to you know like just kind of vibe um you can follow me or of course on um any of the little things there but um I'm so happy to be here and um looking forward to the semester with everyone Joseph Oh, hello everyone, my name is Joseph. I'm the treasurer of ACM and ACMW. Um, I'm a third year in computer science and I plan on doing a mass minor. Um, as of right now, I plan on uh, trying to do something in software development and anything I plan on trying to go to this year's uh, night, night hacks to do uh, my first hackathon with UCF. Um, a few of my interests outside of school are gaming, um, I'm a big football fan, both UCF in college and Jaguars in NFL. And I used to be a swimmer, so I'm, I'm a very big swimming fan. Um, if you do see me, I am going to this uh, football game this Thursday. So if you do see me, don't be afraid to say hi to me. Um, I have my LinkedIn posted right there and my Discord if you guys need me. But I can't wait to meet you all this semester. Kirsten. Hi, my name is Kirsten. Um, I'm the sponsorships director for ACM and ACMW. I'm majoring in computer science and minoring in mathematics here at UCF. I'm currently a third year student and I plan on graduating in the spring of 2023. Uh, some of my interests include UCF athletics. I'm also a huge UCF football fan and I really like playing video games. So if you ever wanna reach out, feel free. I have my Discord and LinkedIn. Mm, Ivy told us she couldn't be here, but Ivy is our workshops director majoring in data science and majoring in computer science. And we will get to know more about workshops later. Ashley, again. Hi, oh, my name is Ashley again. Hello. Um, <laughs> I am the SIGX president and I am a computer science major set to graduate in spring 2022. I am also involved, well, I've been previously involved in student research at the University of Virginia and Rutgers University. And um, my hobbies include visual art, writing, gaming, and books. I really love books. I'm happy to always talk about books. And um, if anyone wants to um, reach out, um, my Discord and my LinkedIn profile are shown here. Thanks. Oh yeah, and um, Danielle couldn't make it, neither could Franco, but you can meet them both at the um, GBM we're having on Wednesday for SIGEC as well. All right, so hopefully you're thinking, wow, this is amazing. I want to get involved in so many ways. So Leah, would you like to talk a little bit about outreach? Sure, yeah, okay. So. Um, we have some awesome stuff that we're talking about still in the works of being finalized and whatnot. So um, some of the outreach events that we're thinking of doing, um, we're gonna have a STEM event with local high schools that focuses on drumming up interest in STEM as well as kind of demonstrating what we do um, and other um, you know, tech relevant um, RSOs on campus. Um, as you can see, um, NGE, which I believe is Next Gen Engineering is yes. also gonna be collaborating on this. Um, and then we have Professor Denker, who is a um, intro to C, right? Intro to C. Um, I know he teaches foundations, like, con I forget what the class is called, but he okay. teaches CS <laughs> classes. <laughs> okay, yeah. So um, Professor Denker, who teaches CS classes, is also going to be, um, you know, hosting it. He is the um, 
the president of his um, high school. I'm not sure which high school it is. He's a computer science teacher at Timber Creek High School. Timber Creek, there you go. Okay, thank you. And um, she leads a Girls Who and, Code Club. Yes, the Girls Who Code Club. So that's an awesome thing, you know, very relevant to us as ACMW. And then in addition to that, we were thinking of like, you know, be talking about some programming workshops that could maybe stem from that. Um, for now, this is virtual, but that could change. But of course, we'll keep you guys updated. Um, I'm thinking we could do some social events, maybe like brunch or coffee, something cute like that, you know, to get acquainted with one another, do some networking. Um, and then I was thinking some uh, foundation exam study sessions. Um, for those of us that are um, in the first or second year, you know, if you've completed CS1, you are now ready to take the foundation exam and it is daunting. <laughs> so um, I think we could do something like that, you know, I guess um, really drum up and make sure that um, our members are ready to tackle this intense exam. <laughs> but yeah, so if you've got any other ideas or anything to add on to what we've got here, you know, like, please um, let me know. And then um, we want to make the semester really great. So um, yeah, we're going to do it. <laughs> so Ivy is our workshop director. And like I said earlier, there is an upcoming workshop on September 15th at 7.30 p.m., which is going to be virtual. It's in collaboration with Bass Enterprises, we're going to be doing a technical skills workshop like to prepare for technical interviews and there's also a forum posted here oops that secure a code and then i can post this link later because copying it <laughs> for the slide is noxious but just like if you have something you would like to see a workshop in like something you feel kind of gets glossed over in class and not covered at all but seems important you know, like man really wish I could learn some more about this from someone that knows what they're talking about, you can go ahead and submit workshop ideas. Or if you are interested in holding a workshop, you're like, wow, I know a lot about this subject from either personal, personal projects, internship or research, I feel like I have wisdom to share with the world, then you should also get in contact with Ivy. Melanie. Hello, so the marketing committee, um, if you want to get invo others involved with like technology or if you like ever like have experience like designing stuff or like you're creative and if you've ever like used like Canva before, um, you can join the marketing committee. You'll make like the graphics and flyers that are used to get people to come to our events. And this will help you like increase um, ACMW event turnout. And you'll also play a role in the club's social media presence. Because if you look at our like Instagram, it's all like the graphics that are made by the marketing committee. And you don't need any experience with graphic design and or Canva. And to join, all you have to do is be in our Discord server and then in the roles channel, react to the co corresponding message to get the marketing committee role. And then I will send a message later with more information. If you haven't given yourself any roles already, you should go ahead and do that. You have all kinds of roles for different majors and levels and all that. Nafisa added a little bit about the mentorship. Any last thing you want to say about signups for tomorrow? Um, yeah, so signups close tomorrow. And um, I mean, there's really not much else to yeah. say. I'm going to try and get you guys paired within like the next four days, maybe. You have to give me some time. Like, I'm really busy. <laughs> but um, Labor Day weekend. Yeah, I, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I should have it done by next week. And then you guys should all go to the reception that's going to happen on the 10th. Yeah, that is scheduled to be in person. Since the is in South Carolina, I will be like filling in as person on the ground for that. But just an event where you go and mentees meet their mentors and vice versa. And you all talk to each other as well. So, mm -hmm. uh, also, here are some resources that I get to know about. Uh, you might not know. So school has a ton of different resources. So like we, I think you get like six free counseling sessions with CARES. There's also a nice pantry, which is a free pantry somewhere on campus for students. 
there is the Career Center. That's a big building on campus next to classroom building two and the psychology building. You can go there and get help with your resume and ask them whatever questions you like about internships, finding jobs. You can also reach out to them on Handshake, which is like the school's version of LinkedIn. And if you just search like UCF Join Handshake, you can find that. You log in here, UCF credentials. UCF also has something called the Emergency Relief Fund, um, where you can apply for money. So like if something happens and you really need money right away or else you might risk dropping out of school, like they don't want you to drop out. They want to keep us all in school. So you can apply for funding from that. And you also have a housing and security fund. So if you're dealing with some housing insecurity or risk of becoming homeless, you can apply to that and they'll help you. Uh, the library rents out equipment like laptops, cables, cameras. So if you need a nice camera for something and you can go and rent that out for a couple of days. The RWC, the gym also rents out some uh, equipment for like camping and stuff. I think they rent out kayaks. So that's cool. And then LinkedIn Learning, this is something all UCF students get for free as part of what our technology fee pays for. So you just need to, if you already have a LinkedIn account, connect to your Knights Mail or connect a LinkedIn account with your Knights Mail. And they have lots and lots of video courses. They have lots of technology related ones. So if you're interested in learning a new technology, that would be a good place to look. Also some home resources. Um, we have a digital library for with some books that you buy as part of like these bundles because they're real cheap. And we have different sections for artificial intelligence, cybersecurity, and web mobile development. So if you were like to become a library patron, if you go to the important links channel in our Discord, is the info on how to sign up for that. Um, we make you request access just because we're trying to keep it within the club and not have people outside the club or outside UCF sign up for this since technically you're probably not supposed to publish them online, but we're thinking as long as we stay within the club, it's all good. And then we also have a slide presentation on tech-related programs at UCF, also on their important links channel because I feel like it's not as easy as it should be to find out about all those programs, like to make that slideshow. I just like entered technology, computer, cyber into the catalog a bunch and looked at everything that came up. It seems like there should be an easier way to see all like related minors and certificates and master's programs. So that is all that resource is also there for you. Also here are some other clips that we're friends with in the same kind of domain. Texas UCF is the Cybersecurity Club. Um, I don't know that time are accurate, but they generally meet Fridays and they hold CTFs, which is capture the flags, which is probably, when you first heard about a hackathon, you, that you, what you were probably imagining was more close to a CTF, which is just when they do cybersecurity related puzzles and problem solving. So we can join the Discord. I'm sure that can also find there's a link on Night Connect. There's also the Artificial Intelligence Club. Again, don't I think we still do meet Tuesdays, but I don't know those times are accurate. But I'm sure the Night Connect and or the Discord website would tell you, but they deal with all things artificial intelligence and data science. So if that is a field you're looking to go into. I recommend checking it out. And this is the Institute of Electronic, Electrical and Electronics Engineers. They do all kinds of cool projects. There's also the Society of Asian Soci Scientists and Engineers. Just into all words to phrase gender period, but and then there's knit hacks, which Kale and I did see you on this call. If you would like to say something, you're welcome to. Yes, I did update the slide, 
but this is the enough this is the older one but that's fine what you need to know is that there's a kickoff meeting next thursday at uh 6 p.m so like all the times what you see right now forget about it that's not that's before 6 p.m on thursdays um and we're have you know we have mentorship we have projects we have professional development oh there it is thank you so much this is the new slide um okay. we also host a hackathon this is probably like the arguably also second most important thing hackathon um if also, some people are wondering the difference between Hack UCF and Night Hacks. Hack UCF, think of cybersecurity. Night Hacks, think of like Hackathon. It's a weekend long event where you build projects, you hack together a project. It's not like actual cybersecurity. The meeting, Corey, to answer your question, the meeting should be in person, but if UCF screws us over for the room, we will move to virtual. Um, <laughs> so, Hackathon's uh, happening in November 12th to 14th. Uh, registration opens mid September. Uh, most important thing is to join us on Discord, nighthacks.org slash Discord. That is where you can find us. Uh, let me see if I can manage to get it. Oh, man, that is not good spelling. <laughs> that's that's good spelling. Okay. But yeah, I won't take up any more time. You can see all the stuff on there. Uh, come to our hackathon. Registration opens mid-September. We are looking forward to having ACM as a club sponsor, as well as other organizations like AI UCF, Hack UCF other stuff, but we're our own club that meets every week. Come to the kickoff meeting next Thursday, 6 p.m. Thank you, guys. Uh, Harold, I believe you register individually for the hackathon and then you make teams. You can make teams beforehand or make teams once you're there. You know, you, you can register by, like teams can come later. Um, like yeah. you just, just make sure you register. You don't need to have a team set ahead of time. You can come in with the team or there's team building activities that happen during the event. Yeah. In terms of like hack in terms of hack fun making was came off like the early days of Peter. I think it was later that it started to be associated with like more criminal activity or nefarious purposes. But. Yeah, I don't know the history of it, but like just thinking of like hacking something together, just like rushing to build something or like throwing things together and making it work. You know, it's a weekend long like invention marathon. That's like what a hackathon is and hacking, I guess, like now is associated with like you know like you know oh i'm in like that type of hacking when it's like technically not it causes a lot of confusion if you're gonna know one thing just know that difference um please because we get this confusion all the time yeah mm -hmm. so, and yeah that is all we have for everyone today um if there are any questions, you can pop them in the chat now or already message me or the other actors. We're very friendly. Don't be afraid to ask us questions. But that's all we have for you. And now we can move over to Discord and play some games and just hang out. So we'll see you all in Discord. I gotta get home, <laughs> but um, it was so great seeing everybody and I hope you enjoy game night. I'll try to make it if I can. But um, yeah, so welcome to ACMW and um, it was great talking to everyone. I feel like I have to be the last few things, but... All right, I'm waiting for all. Catch you in the Discord. <laughs>